In this segment, we're gonna talk about sentiment analysis. Um, we've already talked about this as an instance of a binary classification problem, and we've seen uh, some kind of basics about how we might deal with it with bag of words features, um, but we can think about it a little bit more uh, kind of rigorously here. So we've looked at examples like this. The movie was great, would watch again, uh, and we talked about how uh, having these bag of having bag of words features on unigrams or single words lets you capture things like great as positive sentiment um, and things like bigrams uh, allow or pairs of words in our feature space allow us to capture pairs like watch again. Um, and so, if we think about other uh, kind of examples, this works out well sometimes, uh, but sometimes not so great. So, for example, the movie was gross and overwrought, but I liked it. Uh, in this case, we have two negative sentiment words, gross and overwrought, but the person then says but, and that sort of negates everything that came before, right? Uh, or the movie was not really very enjoyable. Bag of words model, uh, especially with unigrams, might say, oh, enjoyable, looks great. Um, but in fact, again, this is in a negated context here. So, Bag of words models don't seem sufficient uh, from the perspective of handling this kind of dis these discourse structure and, and negation phenomena that we're seeing in these examples. Um, but you know, getting around this and actually operationalizing this to do a lot better is a little bit tricky. Um, so in the world of bigram features, you could do things like when you see a not, basically broadcast that not to every word that follows it. So extract not really, not very, not enjoyable. And now you kind of get all of the, uh, you know, you get the idea that all of these pairs are being negated. Though without some kind of syntactic analysis like a parser, you're going to have a hard time doing this totally reliably. Okay, so turning the clock back to 2002, um, some of the first work on using uh, classifiers for sentiment analysis like this um, was, do was done at, uh, by a team at Cornell. And the rough conclusions they found were that these simple feature sets that we've looked at so far can actually do pretty well. Uh, and so their best performing models here were uh, these unigrams and unigram plus bigram fe uh, features. So Frequency or presence, what that column means is, are they taking this count-based version of bag of words, where if a word occurs twice, it gets a value of two, or just presence or absence, where if a word occurs once or twice or five times, uh, it only still gets a value of one in the feature vector. Um, and so uh, NB is naive Bayes, a uh, classification framework we haven't really talked about. ME, uh, maximum entropy, is just another term for logistic regression. Um, and then SVMs, uh, again, another classifier we haven't talked about much, but which is more or less similar to logistic regression from our standpoint. So it, we see that these, uh, you know, these simple feature sets do fairly well, and it's actually kind of hard to beat this. Um, so there was some work uh, 10 years down the road, uh, Sita Wong and Chris Manning from Stanford uh, revisited the bag of words classifiers versus other methods. And uh, the, what they found is that uh, a modified version of naive Bayes uh, actually could do basically as well as this RAE, pre, RAE pre-trained method uh, with an orange rectangle here. Um, this was a, a kind of neural network model, uh, this recursive autoencoder model, fairly sophisticated model, um, and they were sort of hearkening back to uh, those results on the previous slide from uh, Bob Hong and Lillian Lee, and found that uh, the, you know, essentially like they were able to take modified versions of those earlier techniques and, and kind of beat the neural nets from 2012. Um, now, of course, this was before neural nets really exploded in NLP. And so, uh, you know, just a couple of years later, uh, Yoon Kim, with uh, his work on using CNNs for this, uh, was able to beat these results fairly substantially. So if we look at where we are today, um, this is from a website called NLP Progress, which tracks 
basically state-of-the-art progress on a number of different data sets. And this looks at a slightly different data set than those previous two uh, works. This looks at the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank uh, data set for classification. The best systems now use these big pre-trained models. And so, uh, you know, we have results up here from BERT, uh, from XLNet, uh, stuff that we're going to talk about later in the course. Uh, and these have really pushed the performance pretty substantially. Um, so we've gone from uh, at the bottom here by LSTMs, getting a performance of around 90, to uh, the kind of best state-of-the-art pre-trained models getting a performance of almost 97. Uh, so this kind of underscores, you know, I guess two things. One is how far you can get with basic classifiers that we've already learned about so far. And two, how much this idea of pre-training, which again, we'll come back to later in the course, once we've set up all the neural machinery to deal with it, uh, how much that's going to buy us. That's it for this segment.